Fanatics. Fanatics. Uh, welcome back, everybody. We are in the teens. We are in the teens, and we are finally here, man. It. I don't know how I'm doing to do it. I, I have no idea because, you know, when you when you get to the first like five or six, you're like, wow, it's it. It's you can just like, like crank them out. Like it's not bad at all. But then you realize 32 is a pretty is a pretty big number. 32 is <laughs> that's a that's a lot of a lot of teams, a lot of research that goes into that. Um, so uh, I I've, I've already done the research as far as like my win loss record, which is <sighs> it's gonna change, man. I was hoping that I can get away with just like leaving it, but geez, it's gonna change. It's gonna and like the fact that it changes one game, one game can change the entire outlook of everything. The entire outlook of everything. So I'll give you a little sneak peek. I have the Jets making the playoffs, and I have the uh, the Dolphins making the playoffs. I have the Dolphins in the conference championship game. If I have the Jets beating the Dolphins in one game, the Dolphins miss the playoffs. That's how that's how tight the AFC is. So I don't know exactly how I have it going, but I, man, the Jets are just too good. The Jets are really, really, really good. And I, I know we're not talking about Jets right now, but uh, I just I, I kind of just want want everybody to know how what much goes into this. And it's it's it's, it's inches. Like all these teams that I've already like once once we hit twenty three after the Rams when we hit twenty three, all those teams. I could be completely, completely wrong on. Completely wrong on. There's also uh, trades that happen in season. People get hurt. I could, I mean, I could be completely, completely wrong on. But I think my my 24 and above, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. But 23 and below, it's, man, it's it's tough. It's tough to start, like, uh, nitpicking uh, where where they're at. So I'm, I'm kind of there with, the, uh, with the, my number 19. Um, I have the Denver Broncos and I, it's just so much changeover. It's so much changeover. Uh, you have new coaches, you rebuilt your offensive line. Uh, you, you brought in a ton of guys in general. You had an old defensive line. Uh, you have Vance Joseph coming in when they had Evero. Who knows how, um, you know, you're, your secondary reacts to that because you have Sertain, uh, you have uh, Justin Simmons, and those are good players, but they might, they might, it might be a learning curve to to go from uh, Evero to uh, Vance Joseph. So it's just, they're just so they're just so so tough to rank, and it's 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 hard. It's just hard. I I I don't I don't. Um, I, 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 it, it's, it's tough. I think they're a fairly talented, uh, team, but I don't think they're very talented. I think they're fairly talented. I think they're pretty talented. Um, they're, they're about average as far as the whole team. They have some like high upside guys. They have Sertain, they have Justin Simmons, um, uh, uh, Russell Wilson's been there. Jerry Judy, he has upside. He hasn't, he hasn't really broke out, broke out yet. He's never had a thousand yard season as far as receiving. He had a thousand something yards because he had some rushing, but he's never had a thousand receiving yard season. He's kind of hurt a lot. I, 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 I think they are. I, I don't. I just don't know because like a lot of my logic kind of goes against each other, right? So let's just, like start where we're supposed to always start, right? PFF of offensive line, defensive line, and secondary because we can scheme everything else, right? So. Their offensive line is ranked 11th, but when they are ranking them 11th, they say that they were 20th. So they were 20th, but they added two people. Uh, they added uh, – who, who did they add? They added um, uh, uh, pa- Powers. They added uh, Powers left guard, and they added uh, Mike McGlinchey at uh, right tackle. I don't really know them that well, but they're, they're rebuilding it, but apparently they, they add nine value points from 20 to 11. I uh, I wish I was more uh, knowledgeable of offensive linemen like that deep. I know like pretty much the, you know your top twenty five ish offensive linemen. I'm I'm pretty fair, and I know the Panthers offensive linemen, but I, I I'm just not I I just don't have enough data on offensive linemen, so I don't really know. So I got to take PFF's word on that that these are these are really really good signings. 
Uh, and then we have their uh, PFF uh, defensive backs are fourth. I, I agree with Evero there. I, I think that I think they're I think uh, Sertain might be the best corner in the league, and I think Simmons might be the best safety in the league. So you got the best corner in the league, you have the best safety in the league, you're going to be pretty good. So I'll, I'll take uh, their word for it. And then uh, the big, big, big glaring hole is their uh, defensive line, uh, which is 28th. So they're just ahead of the Saints. And we might just have the same problem that we've been having with uh, the Saints and, like, the Falcons. The Falcons are actually a pretty good, good comp because you, you're saying that you have a pretty good offensive line and you got a good secondary because you brought in uh, Jesse Bates and uh, AJ Terrell. You have um, Sertain and Justin Simmons, but your your defensive line you kind of just kind of throw it together with some older guys. So I, I didn't know Randy Gregory was still playing football because he's always out. Uh, Frank Clark's in his thirties. Uh, Zach Allen's a good player. Uh, DJ Jones. I, I guess, I mean, I, yeah, your defensive lines, it's not, it's not great. It's not a, it's not the best defensive line in the world, which is probably why they're ranked uh, 28th. So I think honestly, the the comp right here is the Atlanta Falcons, except they have a better quarterback and uh, a more accomplished coach, but we also got to go into that. Are we just assigning uh, Sean Payton as good? Because we were really quick to say as soon as uh, Tom Brady left Belichick, that Belichick isn't Belichick anymore. So we're we're dismissing them. I'm not dismissing the Patriots. I actually have them, you know, obviously higher because we haven't got there yet. But are we? Why why don't we do that for Sean Payton? Uh, I, I I've heard many a times how bad McCarthy is. They they started coaching at the same time and. Uh, McCarthy has 11 winning seasons and three losing seasons. And Sean Payton has 10 winning seasons and five losing seasons. Uh, McCarthy's been to four conference championship games and won a Super Bowl. Uh, Sean Payton's been to three conference championship games and won a Super Bowl. McCarthy's been doing it with Aaron Rodgers, of course. But he also is doing it with Dak Prescott, who apparently isn't good uh, by most standards. As soon as as soon, it's almost like Sean Payton's like the Aaron Rodgers of uh, coaches. As soon as uh, Drew Brees leaves, they go nine and eight, and Payton's like, "Bye, y'all." So, so here's the reason that it's like so conflicting for me as far as if the if the Broncos are good is you know when people talk, listen. So Sean Payton leaves the Saints. He leaves the Saints because mostly because you know they they push their contracts down the road. You can't. There's not enough money to manipulate. Uh, you lost Drew Brees. You're just you're just old and you're not going anywhere anytime soon. So I get why you leave the Saints. But you leave. You come to the Broncos. The Broncos are kind of in cap hell too, and they had to pick up Jerry Judy's fifth year option. He's gonna have to get paid soon. Sertain's gonna have to get paid soon. Um, and you're and you're God. You just you have. You have Russell Wilson. I mean, you're paying him till he's like, what, 35, 36? You don't, you don't have a first round pick next year. You don't have a first round pick this year. But he, he jumped at the Broncos' opportunity. So you got to assume that he sees something on this team, right? Because he doesn't just like jump to this. He's going to have uh, options. So Peyton, I mean, I mean, that's an assumption I'm making. I'm ass- assuming Peyton's going to have an option. But honestly, I don't really. Really, really no. Uh, but let's assume that he has options. He chooses the Broncos. And also, this is a negative for the Saints because you're saying that I'm not going to deal with the Saints in the crappy NFC South, but I'm going to go to the uh, – uh, what, what are they in? AFC West? No, no, not AFC. Yeah, AFC – regardless, you know what I'm saying. With uh, uh, Chargers, um, Chiefs, and Raiders. So I got to go. I got to go against Mahomes and Herbert every year. But I'd rather do that than hang out in the NFC South. That's that ain't great. That ain't great for the for the the Saints fans out there. Um. So yeah. So he he decides he chooses chooses the Saints. I mean, he chooses the Broncos. I'm sorry. He chooses the Broncos, and he says, you know what? We were they were five and twelve, but I I see potential, right? Which is odd. 
but I got to assume that he's doing it for a reason. I assume that he sees something. He's an accomplished coach. He didn't need to come back. He's got to be going to the Broncos for a reason. So let's like a, a dig in a little bit on what they did last year. So they uh, went to Seattle. They lost 17-16. Uh, they were at home against Houston. They won 16-9. They uh, won against San Francisco at home 11-10. to uh, They lost to the Raiders 32-23. to They lost to Indy 12-9. to They lost to the Chargers 19-16. They lost to the Jets 16-9. They beat the Jags 21-17. They lost to Tennessee 17-10. Lost to... Uh, the Raiders at home, 22 to 16. They lost to Carolina. Yeah, they did. Uh, 23 to 10 at Carolina. They lost at Baltimore, 10 to 9. They lost to Kansas City, uh, 34 to 28. They won against Arizona, what was left of Arizona, uh, 24 to 15. They lost 51 to 14 at Rams. Man, how did the Rams beat them that bad? Baker was still the quarterback, right? Oof. Wow. Uh, And then they lost at at Chiefs 27-24. And then they won at Chargers 31-28. And I'm pretty sure the Chargers were trying to win that game. I think they were still uh, vying for uh, playoff positioning. So it looks like, let's just, I mean, they got swept by the, the Raiders. They got swept by the Chiefs. And did they beat the Chargers at all? Did uh, they lost to the Chargers. And, oh, yeah, they beat the Chargers in India. Yeah, yeah. So they went well, one in five in the division. Ain't great. Um, they they beat some playoff. They played seven playoff teams. They beat uh, the Seahawks the first game of the season, and they uh, beat the uh, 49ers the third game of the season. And that's still when they had uh, Bradley Chubb and um, uh, who's the other guy that they had um, that they that they traded away. Regardless, that that defense was loaded at the beginning of the year, and they sold off a few pieces. I can't remember the other pieces that they sold off, but you hold the Seahawks um, to 16 points. You hold the 49ers to 10 points. Uh, Houston to nine points. Uh, Indy to nine points. Jets to nine. Uh, six, yeah, yeah. I mean they they started letting they they started letting people score at the end of the year when they started selling off players. Um, but overall, they were five and twelve. They weren't a good team. Um, they they're a tough division. They played seven playoff teams, so that that it was a, it was a tough, tough, tough um, road. Well, this year they also play seven playoff teams, mostly because you know the division had two, so you're playing four already. So let's go down how I have it this year. And after I saw last year, they got swept by the Raiders, and I have them beating the Raiders twice. So I might have to look into that a little bit more. But I have um, at home against the Raiders a win. I have uh, Washington at home a win. And I like Washington this year. So I'm going to pencil them as a playoff team. So win-win. And then they go um, at Miami is a loss just because it's a long road. And I think that uh, they just have have horses. And I think Washington's going to beat you up. Um, I think they lose at Chicago, uh, mostly because they can run the football. They're going to be able to run the football. And you have a terrible defensive line. You lose the Jets because they're just loaded. I, I really like the Jets now. I didn't before, but I like the Jets. Uh, I have you losing on Thursday night football at the Chiefs. I wanted to make that a win, but I didn't realize it was Thursday night football. So at at Chiefs, traveling on a short week, I, I got to say you lose that uh, game to the Chiefs. But I still have you splitting because you play the Chiefs so well. So... We have uh, Packers at home. I have you beating the Packers. That's a – we'll see because uh, you can't stop the run and they're going to run the football. Um, and then you have uh, Kansas City at home. I'd be winning that. Uh, at Buffalo, I'd be losing. Uh, even though it is off a of bye, you still got to travel to Buffalo. I, I have, Buffalo is going to be fighting the – fighting hard for a playoff spot. They have a really, really difficult schedule. So all these games, they're going to be – they're going to be – they're going to be playing with desperation, I guess, um, because I'll get to Buffalo when we get to Buffalo, but their their schedule is brutal, brutal schedule. Uh, then I have you losing at home to Minnesota. Um, then I have you winning 
at home against Cleveland. Uh, I have you winning at Houston. And then I have you losing at Chargers because, you know, road, road. And then you go road, road, road. You play the Lions. I have you losing uh, at Lions um, because they have a really great offensive line. You can run the football against the um, the Broncos because their, their defensive line is not very good. Um, I have you winning at home against New England. That's that's tough because I I think playoff implications for both those teams start coming into play. Um, I have you winning against the Chargers, have you splitting, and then I have you winning at Vegas. So I kind of am giving the Broncos a huge benefit of the doubt. They went one and five in the division last year, and I have them going four and two this year. And then I have them beating. I if you heard last pod, I have them beating the Packers. Uh, I thought I think the Packers are going to win uh, the NFC North. I have them beating some good teams. I I haven't beating my. Uh, they're losing my. I haven't beaten the Commanders. I really like the Commanders this year. I haven't beaten New England. I like New England this year. I haven't beaten the Browns. I like the Browns this year. I don't know, man. I might, I might be too high. I might be giving Sean Payton way too much credit, but I think it's more of I saw Russell. I saw something from Russell Wilson last year. I saw him at the end of last year. He started kind of putting it together. Uh, you, you get a better offensive line. Um, you lost, you lost Tim Patrick. That's tough. Um, and I love. So let's go. Yeah, let's let's do this. Let's go to our draft. So you lost your first round pick because you have Russell Wilson. You. That you lost it to Seattle trade. Uh, you bring in Marvin Mims. So people talk, listen, right? So I've talked about what drafts tell you. If you get a, uh, if you start looking at O-line, defensive tackle, like something that's like a rebuild kind of team, if you're a wide receiver first, you're, you're trying to win because wide receivers can make impacts immediately. Uh, so can linebackers and so can um, uh, cornerbacks. So they go wide receiver, linebacker, cornerback. They're trying to win. They think they got a good enough team to win. And Marvin Mims is basically Brandon Cooks. And when uh, and Cor- Cortland Sutton is basically Michael Thomas. They're literally the same size, same speed. They uh, uh, Cortland Sutton has really great hands. Uh, he's learning uh, uh, slant routes. He's studying Michael Thomas tape. Uh, Marvin Mims' straight line speed is it's Brandon Cooks. They're they're you know, I think he's a four three one forty time. So it's he's he's basically Sean Payton's telling us what he's doing. He's re, he's rebuilding the Saints, basically. Uh, so yeah, I mean you can even tell you, you, he's bringing in uh, uh, Manhurts. What? <laughs> uh, and all that's telling me is that it's a big, strong guy. He's he's going to run the football. He's going to run the football, play action, throw deep, slant routes. You've seen it. You've seen it. We've seen it for what? How many? How long is it? Fifteen years. We've seen Sean Payton for fifteen years. Slants goes play action, run the football. Uh, why? Uh, running back screens. That's why you bring in Samaji P. Ryan. Javante Williams is a very good pass catcher as well. You kind of see where everybody's going to fit in. Javante Williams, Kamara, kind of thing. And while Javante Williams is recovering from ACL, P. Ryan's the same thing. He's he's kind of like a a, a bigger pass catching back, which is kind of what Kamara is. He's basically rebuilding the Saints. The only difference is that NFC South was kind of a joke. I mean, we had that 2016 Falcons team was really, really good. That 2015 Panthers team was really, really good. Other than that, it was kind of a – I mean, Tom Brady, of course, when he came in, but uh, he was only there, what, three years when Peyton was there. So, so for the most part, you got – they got four or five wins just in the division every single year. And they go, I mean, I know I have them going four and two in the division this year, but that ain't going to happen with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert in the division. And McDaniels beat the Broncos twice last year. I don't know. I don't, I need, I might need to relook at this. Uh, this, I think nine and eight might be their ceiling. Cause wow, man, I haven't beaten some good teams. And I just haven't seen them prove it. I mean, Vance Joseph, we all just kind of assume that he's going to be a good defensive coordinator. Vance Joseph is is 132 and 156 his coaching career. I mean, there's nothing really exciting about it. He got fired for the Broncos after two years because he wasn't very good. 
He's he's building the Saints, and I just don't know how that works without Drew Brees. I don't know. They, they might. And you got you got a bunch of new names. You rebuilt your defensive line with Frank Clark. Uh, you got Randy Gregory coming back. They're both thirty. Zach Allen's a good signing. DJ Jones, meh. Um, Jonathan Harris, meh. Alex Singleton's a good player. And then you got a great secondary. Kind of like the Saints. The Saints have a good secondary. They're, they're front, their front seven was good for a second, and then now they're 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 bad again uh, because they had to bring in uh, uh, Derek Carr. So they're going to try to control clock. They're going to try to outcoach you, basically. They're going to try to um, use Cortland Sutton for first downs. They're going to try to get easy um, easy scores with um, Marvin Mims. I don't really know how Jerry Judy fits. He's he's pretty talented. They might because you are picking up his fifth year option already. If you might you might just play him a couple games and it might be a trade piece, man. I don't I don't I just don't know how he fits. He might be playing that Z role for Marvin Mims, but Judy only runs like a four five, like a, I think it's like a four five four maybe. Um, Sean Payton likes to use. He likes to spread. He, he, didn't want, he didn't want Judy work at the middle of the field, I don't think, because he likes to use his tight ends. He likes to use his backs um, a lot. So I just don't I, – I, I, I'm actually kind of interested to see how he fits Judy in because he doesn't usually have that kind of uh, player. I'm trying to think. I don't think that he's, he's had that sort of – yeah, he's the – yeah, he, he, gets a, he has a speed guy, um, a downfield – guy and then he has a, a possession guy and he, he uses tight ends a lot and he uses his uh, running backs a lot they're gonna run the ball they're gonna run the ball a lot they're gonna run the ball they might run the ball more than anybody else in the league or they, they might lead the league in like rb touches like you know sort of wide creative wide receiver i mean uh, running back screens i just don't know if it's that's a tough schedule i don't know if it's gonna work um i think i have almost all of these teams as i don't have Vegas, Chicago, Houston, Detroit. I think those are the only teams I don't have with winning records this year. So in my opinion, it's a tough schedule. Maybe other people don't think that it's a, that's a tough schedule. And they might be a couple years away, but you know, a couple years away isn't great because you got to pay Judy. Sutton's getting older. Wilson's getting older. But man, he came. He he went there. He chose the Broncos. It's when people talk. Listen, man, I don't, I don't see it, but he does. Yeah, yeah. They're uh, they're uh, out of a nine and eight. They're uh, a fringe playoff team. I think their schedule is really, really, really tough, and they're not going to make it. But I'm, I'm I'm trying to find it. I'm I'm trying to find it and I just don't see. I don't I don't see them. I just don't I don't I don't see why he chose to go to the Broncos. It doesn't seem like a smart move to me, but I don't know. I'm giving I'm giving him the bit of the doubt and the only the only reason that they're going 9 and 8 is cuz I'm giving him the bit of the doubt because that's a really tough schedule. I don't know. They got good players. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just um <laughs> I never thought I would say this as a Panthers fan, but I'm kind of like just trusting Sean Payton a little bit. Eh, whatever. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, we're in the teens now. I'm really excited for doing number 18 next. Uh, I don't even know if I'm under, if I'm excited about it or not. I don't even know who 18 is. I have it written down somewhere, but I guess I'm excited. I'm excited to be in the teens. I'm excited to talk about interesting teams because, man, the early teens, oh, that was a, that was a snooze fest. Uh, but I really appreciate you listening and uh, follow, listen, download, subscribe, you know, all this stuff. All right, bye.